especially at the media and uh, more popular science publications, um, the argument is often raised that we need an eco-dictatorship to solve the climate challenge because it's um, so urgent um, uh, and so complex that democracies can't deal with it and that we should actually go to war against climate change. And you find that, for example, in a special issue of the time, you find it uh, in uh, reality in terms of secretarization of climate change where the U.S. Army already has uh, many analysis out there how climate change is a security threat. And what this basically means if we go to war against climate change that we don't deal with it democratically. So I was very much interested in that question, should we really or are we uh, in need of going to war against climate change because democracies can deal with it. So I looked at one democracy in particular in the Kyoto Protocol process uh, of Canada from 1995 to 2012, because in 1995, the first conference of the parties of the United uh, Nations um, climate program started, and in 2012, the commitment period of the Kyoto Protocol ended. And I investigated this period, especially to find out the mechanisms that exist between certain democratic qualities like transparency, liberty, publicity, uh, inclusiveness, participation, and climate performance. And what you see in Canada is over the whole time period that um, it wasn't actually that a democratic process. Start very early in 1995 because then the process started in Canada. Um, what should be the target Canada proposes at the Kyoto conference where the Kyoto protocol will be um, uh, debated. And that process in the two years before that was very much based on the executive. So it was first minister meetings of the provinces, territories and the federal government. And um, there were not much um, public involved. But at the end, however, this uh, process came up with um, a standstill. So neither to uh, rise or to decline your climate emissions. And um, at least the provinces and the federal government agreed on that. But at the Kyoto, protocol, uh, Kyoto Pro conference itself, um, the Prime Minister Kretien wanted to be much more ambitious. And so he accepted a minus 6% reduction target. At the end, it turned out when he got home to Canada that the um, provinces and the territories and of course uh, the business more related to the oil sands, for example, were not very happy with that because they previously agreed to a standstill. So it was decided to have a national climate change process because there was uh, this difference between the um, consensus before and uh, the target agreed on how to move forward. So Canada really implemented a democratic experiment with a so-called national climate change process. And it was about 16 issue tables with uh, experts um, from technology, um, land use, uh, mobility and so on and so forth. And these expert tables um, were composed by um, people from the business sector, from uh, environmental NGOs, from the provinces, from the federal government and many more. So it was a very inclusive process and the problem was right from the beginning that it was not clear what was the intent of the process. So should it decide whether Kyoto should be ratified um, what options could we develop to implement Kyoto um, or was it more a general uh, meeting on, on climate issues where um, Canada finds a new position on that. So these issue tables met over two years. They developed option papers. They um, did a lot. So this whole process was very inclusive. It was transparent because they already had a website at the end of the 1990s where they published all their material. Um, it had some sort of accountability structures. It had a National Climate Change Secretariat um, backing up the whole process. But at the end, it ended up by immobilizing decision-making rather than facilitating decision-making. And the reason for that is that the process lacked democratic tools that brought all the different um, opinions, visions, ideas from this 
experts and the tables to one sort of consensus or to, to one agreement how to move forward. And one of the main reasons was, as I already mentioned, that there was a lack of the clarity of intent of that process because the Prime Minister used its prerogative, which uh, assures him very much power, um, at the Kyoto Protocol Conference. And so this process is a very good example that if you um, set up a democratic process, but you don't think it through and people get frustrated, uh, they will never get uh, to a point where they will be motivated to do this again in the future. But if these democratic tools would have been applied, where some sort of consensus uh, through a certain procedure would have been reached, this could have been some sort of breaking point where Canada actually would have been become much more climate friendly than it was. What tells us this uh, in terms of the question whether becoming more an eco-dictatorship or whether to be more uh, on the side of democratic efficacy and to trust in democracy and its problem solving capacities? Well, in 1997, the Prime Minister was at the uh, Kyoto Conference more acting as some sort of eco-dictator when he said, well, we do this minus 6% regardless of whether uh, the country will uh, and the um, provinces will accept that. And you see, if, if this happens, um, the, the society and the provinces are not very much in um, favor of it because they were not involved. They were not part of it because this means, of course, lifestyle changes. This means uh, new businesses that have to be set up that would probably lead to a restructuring of the Canadian industry and so on and so forth. And if, you, if, if the most important players and uh, the, those that should have been involved were not involved in such a decision, then even an eco-dictatorship will end up in immobilizing this whole decision making rather than facilitating and helping it, the climate issue in some regard or the other. So at the end, it very much appears that more democratic quality and uh, high democratic qualities can only lead to a better climate performance. And these findings are also backed up by the literature on the transformation to sustainability, which argues basically that we need a new social contract uh, that is uh, based on democratic principles if we want to solve sustainability issues, that, um, for example, change agents need some room for experimentation that they only can reach in democracies and not in autocracies to change uh, the greenhouse gas intense lifestyles uh, that exist to um, alter dominant regimes and then to um, eff efficiently um, alter um, global processes.